On today's episode, I'm going to show you a quick little trick of how to use your rotary tool with a piece of filament to weld two pieces of plastic together or use it to fill in gaps on your 3D print. It's called fusion welding or friction welding and it's been around for a long time. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use this for your 3D prints. When I was a kid, and that was a long time ago, trust me, there was a toy. It was like a gun, and it had a motor and it spun, and you put these little rods inside that were a soft plastic rod, almost like a glue stick on a hot glue gun. And the friction of this thing spinning against other plastic would melt that rod and weld the two pieces of plastic together. So you could get these kits of like a car frame and weld it together, or a house pieces of a house and build the frame of the house. It was a lot of fun. Well, I saw someone do something similar with a rotary tool and a piece of filament that they actually welded 3D prints together, pieces of a 3D print. And I thought, that's kind of cool. I'll give it a try. So I'm going to show you today how I use this low-cost Harbor Freight rotary tool I bought that I built the stand for in the last episode. I'm going to use that with a piece of filament to weld some plastic together and show you how well it works. So here I have two little yellow blocks. They're actually a failed print from a while ago, but I kept them around just, I don't know, for whatever reason. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of white filament. And I got this from a cartridge that had ran out. It was down to zero. And you know, you always got a little bit left. So I cut a piece off about inch, inch and a half long. And then I put that inside the, the rotary tool. Now I want to keep about, I don't know, a half an inch sticking out. And I found sometimes even that's too long. So you just turn it on, see how it looks. If it's flipping around too much, just clip a little bit off. Get it down to the size you want. So when it spins, it's almost spinning straight. And then you take your two blocks or your two pieces of plastic, get them where you want them, and you can easily do this in a clamp instead of holding them with your finger like I'm doing, but you just push the filament while it's spinning right into the two plastics and get things to heat up so the filament starts to melt. But the plastic on the two pieces is also going to melt, so the white here melts with the yellow. Now I'm using white so you can see the difference, but normally you'd use the same color as the plastic you're trying to weld. Now you can't really tell from the camera view here, but I can see that the white and the yellow have really merged together. It's a pretty good bond. So now I've got a gap here on the side, and this is where it's really handy to use the filament to melt inside the crack or inside the gap. Now I'll go over it a second time with a new filament and weld the whole thing. Now I'm going to weld to the stuff I put on first to fill the gap and also the yellow portion. So I'm kind of building a weld across the whole thing. So now I've got two sides of this welded together. And it looks pretty good. I mean there's a lot of extra plastic but it feels pretty solid. But now I'm going to use this sanding tool to grind it down. I want to see how well the white blended in with the yellow so I can see how well this really works. And if I sand this down and there's nothing left, then I know the whole point of it was defeated. It didn't really melt at all. But as I sand this, I can see that it's sticking. I can see that the white and the yellow have bonded together. And it's nice and smooth, so I could actually paint the surface if I wanted to. Now I want to try two pieces that are different shape and different thickness. So I've got two pieces from the motor project I did a while ago. These are scraps. And I got some red filament, so you can't tell where the weld starts and where the weld stops, other than the blob that you see once it's welded. And it's amazing that they're the same color. It's a little harder to see where I started and stopped because everything's just flowing together. It's actually, I think, a better weld than having the white versus yellow. So now I'll do the other side. So I've got one side welded, now I'll do the other side. 
And I actually found it's easier if you push, because once the plastic starts flowing, you just kind of push the, the molten plastic and it melts along the whole edge. And that's kind of how real welding works for me. When I use an arc welder, it's similar kind of setup. So there's the finished piece, all welded in place. Now let's see how strong this is. I'll see if I can pull it apart. And I broke the, the gear print before I broke the weld. So that's a good sign. It looks like it's really strong. I mean, this is like a nice propeller now. And it, it was easy to do. So I guess this definitely works. So there you have it, a fun little way to use your Dremel tool or rotary tool with some filament to weld a couple 3D prints together. I used it first on a couple of leftover blocks from the Christmas project and it really, really worked well. Now for small stuff like this, I still probably would use an acetone or some kind of glue, but I use acetone a lot for stuff and that works really well. I think where this is really useful is larger prints. If I have a couple prints that barely fit the bed and I want to put them together, that's a lot of surface area to acetone and glue together before the acetone dries. I don't think that would work that well to be honest with you. So this works out great for that type of project if I can just get away with welding on the edge and then grinding it down smooth if I need to. So there are times where I think this is really better than acetone and there's other times where I think acetone fusing them together is a better option. So that's it. There's your fusion welding or plastic welding or rotary welding or friction welding or whatever you want to call it. I'm sure there's an official term for it and I missed it. But the point is it worked pretty well. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. I'll see you next time.